Oh, don't tell me I should have put this in beforehand. A little extra dumb. Oh no, look at that. Boop, and then pop that in like so. Okay. Oh, well I feel extra silly. I put that pin in before I put that linkage on in. Welcome back to rent spark today. I'm gonna to be repairing my chainsaw I have here. As you can see, I don't have a handle anymore. I bought this chainsaw and about an hour in, when I was cutting down a tree, the blade got pinched. I couldn't remove the chainsaw and when the tree fell, it fell and this landed on its tail end like so and shattered out the handle. So I went to the store I bought it from and asked what it would cost to replace it for parts and everything and turned out to be with labor, the same price as a brand new chainsaw. So I bought a new chainsaw, <laughs> another one. So I have two of these still Farm Boss's 271s, but I then bought just the parts here, checked it all out, figured, hey, why not try to fix it myself? The pieces I'll need is the handle to the chainsaw, but the handle also encapsulates most of the chainsaw. So I had to buy this big chunk. I think they call it the fuel tank assembly. So it has the fuel tank assembled there and the filter, got the cap. Because mine shattered, I needed to get all the appropriate hardware that goes with it. So I have the handle that goes here and it clips in like so. Trigger part here that you have to depress to make it go. To break it down, on the T27 Torx bit, a hammer, and a punch. There's probably gonna be other tools, but looking at the chainsaw, that's really all I could find. I had this idea that I was gonna take the bar off and everything, but I don't think I need to do that. I think I can take care of everything just here. One of the issues is when I bought this chainsaw, I had filled it up with fuel and bar oil. So it's still mostly full. I think I put a second tank in. Yeah, that's about full and I know the bar oil is that's definitely full. I'm just gonna pour it into this cup. I think about it, I don't know why I even needed to pour that out. Eh, it doesn't matter. I almost forgot to glove up. So first things first, I have those two bolts that connect to the handle. I'm gonna remove those, and then remove those two bolts that are connected to the handle as well. That looks like it's just a spring inside there, but then down back in there is the fuel line where it gets sucked up into the motor. Right here is another spring, looks like probably for vibration. I need to disconnect that as well. So I'll be taking off this cover and then I believe there's another bolt right there. Oh, that's frustrating. Right in there is where I need to access, but this piece of plastic kind of in my way. Looking at it, looks like I can disconnect that bolt and it'll free up that side. And it looks like you can disconnect that screw and it should free up that side. So we'll need a T20 for this screw. Inside here is this little cutout piece and I was really hoping I could just kind of pull these apart and it pop out and not have to undo this handle here. And I might not be so lucky. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna take apart this more. Looks like we're in Fat City there.
So right here, we need to undo this clip, this trigger piece here. There's a pin here. I'm gonna hammer that pin out and then should free up this trigger, undo that linkage. So right here is a vibration pad looking thing, this yellow foam piece. And there's a little nub, hard to see. There's a little nub in there and I just need to pop that nub out and everything should be free. And there's another vibration pad right here, but it's not connected to anything. It's just sitting there floating. So you got the nub out. Ooh, so it does look like on here, I need to undo that bolt and spring. T27 bit as well. There we go. Kind of frees it up a little, a little better. All right, yippee, we are out. Now, that piece looks like I just need to pull that part that goes into the fuel tank. Just need to pop that out. Ta da! A little bit of fuel out. We'll compare the two pieces together, see if there's any missing parts or what we gotta do to change pieces over. But it looks like all I gotta do is take this spring off. So I took that screw out, so I'll slide it. Looks like it just slides right back on. Anything else of noticeable difference? Nope, everything looks pretty much the same. Should be, it's the exact same part. The only thing is Inside this one, they already have the fuel filter attached. So in this one, they have the fuel filter attached. And then in the new one, it's not attached. I have it in a little bag. I gotta fish that out. I got one of these really cool picks. Let's see if it will work. That's what I need. Look at that. Got it out. Here's the new fuel filter. And it looks like it's just a barbed plug. All right, we're in. Shove that little puppy back in there. Fuel filters in. With the gas cap, we have this little ball and it needs to go right inside that slot inside. And that's the way it will be held. Oh, perfect. I just got the string in the slot. Boom, pulled it tight, we're good. So that piece slid out pretty easy. We will put it into that piece. So underneath the chainsaw here, it's a little dirty. We'll just kind of give it a clean up real quick. Just plug that in, call it a day. It seems easier for me to just kind of place this in roughly where it's gonna go. Lines up with the fuel piece pretty well. We'll just push that fuel line in. It'll line this piece up. There's a lot of little things that need to line up. So we wanna line up this dampener spring. We have the fuel line in. And then on this handle here, we need to line those up. And then on the bottom side as well. So it's kind of a bunch of little things simultaneously happening. This was one of the last things I took out. So I put that in. I put it in with this little T20 volt. When I actually just kind of set everything up, everything kind of fell into place. So that peg fell into where it needed to go. This dampener is where it needs to go. I just need to line this handle back up and then screw everything back together. Because this is new plastic, it's kind of a hassle to push it in with a ratchet. So might as well use a little power. I'm not tightening it down all the way. So we're at the back of the chainsaw here and we need to put in the bolt that holds into that spring. Now I took this piece of plastic kind of off. I loosened it, move it out of the way. It goes right into the head of the block right there. And it's the only machine thread screw.
And then this last little screw goes in here. So next is that linkage there and all these pieces and parts and pins and all the stuff. I feel like they sold me parts I don't need. Like this piece, I don't need that. I don't need that link either. I don't need that part. I don't know why they sold me that. I needed this really. And this sort of broke off and lost. I even have this pin. They were so worried about me having this pin. I don't see where that goes. I mean, maybe I'll find out here shortly. So here I got the trigger connected to the linkage arm that goes to the throttle. The spring comes down. This is the safety switch that you have to depress in order to unlock the trigger. So you have to press that down to make that work. If that's, uh, if that's not depressed, the trigger can't move. Now we gotta put the cap on and the cap slides these two teeth here or that little, that, that jags out. There's a little hole for it to hide out underneath, right in there. And then there's a clip back here. You just press in, voila, done. Look at that. So all the tools I actually ended up using was a T27, a T20, a punch, a little hook, a flathead screwdriver, and a hammer to get the pin out. But it was pretty easy. I'm stoked on how it worked out. Now I won't have uh, the broken handle issue. It was able to work just fine. And I cut down a bunch of trees still and kept using it because I needed to get the job done. But the biggest issue was when I was holding on to it, the chain would pull a little bit and there's nothing for me to have my hand catch on. So the chains I would zip out. I mean, I never dropped it or lost it, but ooh, it got, it got pretty hairy at times. So I'm glad I got that on now and it feels good. Pretty amped on it. I was told that I was not going to be able to change it really easy, but if I wasn't filming, probably would have taken me 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. But because I was scared that my hand was going to slip out here and I was going to get hurt, I just bought another one. This has been my workhorse only because that one I didn't want to use. And uh, yeah, I love these things.